This is Auto House Hamilton TV and I'm James. In this video I am Lord of the Rings. Well, Lord of the Piston Rings anyway. Piston rings are unusual in that we know exactly who invented them and the man who invented them was a gentleman from the north of England by the rather splendid name of John Ramsbottom. I'm quite fond of John Ramsbottom for two reasons. One, he shares my initials and two, he shares my birthday. In addition to inventing piston rings as we know them, John Ramsbottom also invented a rather clever device for loading water into steam trains while they were underway. Before piston rings were invented, steam engines used lengths of rope stuck into, stuck into the lands of the pistons as a way of minimizing the amount of steam blow-by that occurred. As a side note, a steam engine is an external combustion engine, whereas the, the engines that we all know and love are, as we all know, internal combustion engines. There are two types of piston rings used in an internal combustion engine. There are compression rings and oil control rings. So on this piston, for instance, which is a 996 cup car engine, there are two compression rings and one set of oil control rings. So these skinny guys here are the compression rings and this combined ring is an oil control ring. And the rings do pretty much what, what their names tell you they do. The job of the compression rings is to minimize exhaust gas blow-by and maintain compression in the engine. The oil control rings, as you'd expect, control oil and what they do is they push oil back down the cylinder walls. And it's testimony to how well they do their job that cars don't need to have their oil replenished after every short journey. There is a third and rather less obvious job that piston rings do and that is they help to transfer heat from the piston to the cylinder walls and in so doing help regulate temperature within the engine. Piston rings are designed to have a gap when inserted into the engine. You can see the gap in this ring if I hold it up to the camera. You can see the gap at the top there. And you can also see that when the, when the ring is compressed, that gap reduces in size. And that gap needs to be carefully managed. You don't want too large a gap because too large a gap reduces the efficiency of the piston ring. And you also don't want too small a gap because too small a gap means that when the ring expands as the engine heats up that there's nowhere left for it to go. And that causes its own set of problems. Increased friction within the cylinder and ultimately damaging and breaking the piston ring. The other thing that the builder of an engine will do is ensure that the gaps of the different rings are orientated relative to each other in the correct manner and that correct manner is usually specified by the manufacturer of the piston. Once the, the piston has been installed in the engine and that's done with the aid of a thing called a piston ring compressor which squeezes those rings in so that the piston with its rings can be slid into the, into the cylinder ball. Once the piston is in place those rings can and do move to some extent. Exactly what that extent is seems to be open to conjecture. Um, some sources will tell you that the rings carry on moving uh, around the, the piston during their working life. Others will say that they eventually find a place and settle in that place and once they've found their, their, their happy place they stop moving. We know that they do move because some manufacturers specify that the rings should be pinned in place to prevent them from moving at all. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is two different types of cylinders and with those two different types of cylinders, two different types of piston rings that Porsche used in classic air-cooled 911s. The two different cylinder types were Kolbenschmidt and Marle. Now Kolbenschmidt used Alucil cylinders where Marley used cylinders lined with Nicosil. The difference between them is that Alucil is relatively soft and Nicosil is relatively hard. Because the cylinders are different, they need different piston rings. Now, 
some sources will tell you that you can use one type of piston ring on both cylinders, but that doesn't seem to be completely true. The difference is that because Alusil cylinders are relatively soft, you need a relatively hard piston ring to work with them. And in the case of, of Alusil cylinders, what you should be using is a chrome piston ring. The chrome piston ring is harder than the, than the cylinder and that ensures that piston ring and cylinder bed together and wear together well. If you're using Marley barrels, which, which are relatively hard with their nicosil lining, then you need relatively soft cast iron piston rings. And again, it's to allow the one to wear the other so that they bed together. If you have any comments or anything to, to add to that, I'd be interested to read about them in the comments section. And once again, thank you very much for watching.